mimi naitwa Pastor Ken Nyaga wetu ni mbu naomba ya kabingo na njera tukakoro tukivunjia Nairobi no still ni tukoragwa na branch Korea mbu wadanya goswe mono nego moja ge koyo munde ibona ina ugando mato me kidogo ah pole sana kwa jamii ya demwears Pastor Kamau na mam anajua mlifanya vile mngeweza kwa sababu tumekuwa tukizungumza kipo angalia miaka ya Kevin nilijiuliza maswali mengi sana nikao nauliza na je kama angefikisha miaka 40 tungekuwa na mtu aina gani duniani lakini hatukuweza kuona hiyo wakati nataka kusema uh, wakati Mungu amekupatia nafasi ya kuwa na uhai tafadhali tumie vizuri na umelewa ya kwamba kuna wakati miaka yetu zote tutafika kikomo chetu ukienda kwa mtu ambaye anaondoka duniani akiwa kwa kitanda cha mauti muulize what do you want atakwambia more time unfortunately ikiwa imefika mwisho haiwezi kaendelea zaidi ya hapo kama ni Mungu amesema so na ndugu pale Nairobi Christ Intervention Ministries tunakuanga chini ya mbili anaitwa Bishop Dr. Harrison Nganga manake that's where we have been brought up na tunasema poleni nyote mliofiwa na hata sisi tumeguzwa na njia nyingine Mungu awafariji Bwana Yesu asifiwe kwa majina naitwa Purity mimi ni mchungaji pale Christ Intervention Ministry huyu ndiye mume wangu na sisi tukua hapa tumekuja kama marafiki ya family ya Pastor Kamau na tumeleta pia pole zetu kwa kumpoteza kijana mdogo na tunaomba ya kwamba Mungu atafariji mioyo yenu yake. Haleluya. Bwana Yesu asifiwe sana. Amen. Ya kwa majina naitwa Pastor Newton Mutugi. Uh, I pastor Nairobi Christ Intervention Ministry. Tuko pale town center. Ana mali pastor Ken Nyaga. Bwana Yesu asifiwe sana. Haleluya. Amen. Ah uh, Pastor Kamau is my friend. Ani nijuana na yeye online. Ndio my senior pastor. Tukajuana tumekuwa tukikuwa fellowship pamoja. So wakati tulipata na huyu msiba tulisikia kwamba pia we are part and parcel as friends. Kwa nini sasa sana? Is our close friend, he also my dad. We normally share na this week causes me. So at this juncture na sasa sema kwamba Ah uh, moya ni kijana mdogo naona miaka yake and I would like to say that uh, in the book of uh, Isaiah um uh Isaiah 65 verse 20 inasema kwamba that uh, God will not allow the infants to die hallelujah for so sana that the least will die there will be 100 years 100 years for so sana so um as being here nikikuja tu kuwatia nguvu nitasema ya kwamba huyo mlango wa kipo ya watu wa ndogo ifungike katika jina ya Yesu Kristo. Kwa nini sasa sana? Ya tutasika watu wenye wamefikisha 100 and above in Jesus name. Alikweni sana. Amen. Ah ningeomba tusimame kwa sababu ya heshima ya neno na mtumishi wa Mungu tuweze kuomba kwa ajili Mungu atupatie nafasi ya neno lake. Baba katika jina la Yesu neno lako umeinua zaidi ya kila kitu. Unasema ya kwamba yote duniani yataisha lakini neno peke yake litasimama. Wakati huu wa majozi, wakati mawazo yetu inazunguka bila kuelewa kabisa ni nini kingine kinaweza fanya nika kwa mwanadamu. Ni neno lako tu lilo na suluhisho na usemi wa kufanya tukuelewe na tuelewe njia zako. Kwa hivyo Bwana tunakuomba tuandalie meza hii na mioyo yetu uitayarishe kulipokea neno lako pamoja na mtumishi uliyeandaa. Mtumie kama jinsi Bwana ulivyomwandaa kwa ajili yetu na ili neno lipate nafasi katika jina la Yesu Kristo tumeomba. Amen. Amen. Na wasalimu nyote katika jina la Yesu hamjambo.
kama naisikia sauti yangu nitungie tu hewani kidogo tu niende tuko pamoja kwa basi kama ambavyo imetajwa jina langu ni uwanje mimi nimezaliwa mahali panaitwa Malindi uko karibu na Mombasa nilipokea Yesu Kristo nikiwa huko huko Malindi nikiwa na miaka kumi na miwili na kwa mapenzi ya Mwenyezi Mungu kwa sasa kuna mchungaji hapo Nairobi kanisa linaloitwa Rejoice Baptist Church ambapo pia Pastor Dan tuko pamoja katika huduma huko na kama ambavyo ilisemekana ndugu Kamau na jamii yake kabla kuhamia Marekani walikuwa washirika pamoja na sisi tulipokuwa pamoja kule mochare ya asubuhi tulianza safari yetu tukiongea kutoka kitabu cha ayubu tukaongea jinsi ambavyo ayubu alikuwa mfuasi wa Mwenyezi Mungu ambaye alipitiliwa na matatizo mengi sana imagine in one day to lose all your wealth imagine in one day to lose all your children kama kuna pigo kubwa nafikiri ayubu alijua pigo kubwa linakaa namna gani na baada ya kupigwa na pigo kubwa la namna hiyo mke wake akamwambia si umlaani huyo Mungu tu na kwa sababu alimwambia amlaani ni kwa sababu even after all that loss ayubu akapatwa na pigo la afya yake ya mwili wake But come out with your sema. In spite of all that loss and all that pain. Ayubu akasema ya kwamba Mungu ndiye ambaye anapeana na akasema Mungu ndiye ambaye anatoa. Katika maelezo yetu ya kibinadamu huwa tunasema ni ugonjwa fulani umemchukua. Lakini ule ukweli kabisa hakuna ugonjwa ambao unaweza kuwa na nguvu zaidi ya mpango wa Mwenyezi Mungu juu ya mwanadamu. Hata madaktari waite ugonjwa wako jina kubwa sana. Unless God himself says come home. Hakuna ugonjwa that can check you So mara nyingi tunapokuwa na matatizo tunajikumbusha Ayubu pia alikuwa na matatizo. Lakini kama tulivyosema aliposema ya kwamba ni Mungu anayepeana na ni Mungu anayechukua he was confessing the truth not only of the sovereignty of God but also of the truth of the presence of God in the journeys where we have challenges in this life huyu huyu ayubu katika mlango wa 14 wa kitabu chake akasema mwanadamu ambaye amezaliwa na mwanamke maisha yake ni ya siku chache sana na akasema ni mwingi wa matatizo yani every person who is born of a woman His days are very few. But he's also full of trouble. Na ndio sababu sisi zote tulio hapa kila mmoja ana kashida yake kaida fulani. 
kama si nyumbani ni kazini kama si kazini ni mwilini kama si mwilini ni mfukoni kama si mfukoni ni gari imekuletea shida kama si gari shamba haizai vile unastahili izae all of us have little troubles in life ayubu akasema any man that is born of a woman your days are very few na aliposema maneno hayo ni ya kwamba unapolinganisha maisha yako and the eternity of god hata ukaishi miaka 200 bado it is just a few days na ayubu huyo huyo katika mstari wa 14 then in job chapter 14 akauliza swali that looked like a great question then Akauliza if a man dies will he live again I am sure to job that time that was a great question Yaani mwanadamu akifa je ataishi tena Swali so, hilo ni swali ambalo tumejiuliza kwa miaka mingi kabla sisi hatujazaliwa watu walikuwa wanakufa na hata baada ya leo hata pasta amesema pengine kesho ni kwa mtu mwingine na kwa mtu mwingine we will continue to die until finally the purposes of god are made manifest in our lives ayubu akauliza je mwanadamu akifa je ataishi tena katika swali lake ayubu wants us to confront the truth that there is a day of dying and that is why we are here and the mystery in the days of dying is it is not revealed to us when we shall die but to die we shall even pastor made reference to the scripture it is appointed for man to die mwanadamu katika kufikiria swali hilo the philosophers wametuambia kwamba mwanadamu akifa namna hii mambo yake yameisha na wakati tutakapozika mwili huu makaburini ati sasa mambo ya mwanadamu yameisha and some people believe that that when you die everything about you is over but that is just the philosophy of man dini pia imejaribu kutusaidia So watu wengine wa dini wakasema a a mwanadamu akifa namna hii nafsi yake inapiga marounds huko hewani na kama alikuwa mtu mzuri atarudi azaliwe na kiumbe kizuri na kama alikuwa mtu mbaya atakuja azaliwe na mnyama mbaya kwa sababu alikuwa mwanadamu mbaya so dini pia katupatia uh, ma, majibu ya aina fulani that when you die don't worry you will still live again it depends on how you live if uliishi maisha mabaya utazaliwa na mnyama mbaya kama uliishi maisha mazuri utazaliwa vizuri sawa so, nakuulize mwanzao no waachana na yeye <laughs> and so dini pia ikachangia to this question but i want to tell you kama imani yako unaiangika kwa philosophy ya mwanadamu na kama imani yako unaiangika kwa dini unayoifuatizia then ole wako because beyond the philosophy of man and beyond religion there is a living god who is living now and will be living forever and he is the god who finally every one of us will stand before him katika kitabu cha nuka mlango wa 16 kuanzia mstari wa 19 Jesus Christ promotes the question of job to another more important question katika andiko hilo tunaambiwa kulikuwa na mtu mmoja mtajiri alikuwa mtajiri sana hata mavazi yake yalikuwa ya kipekee chakula chake kilikuwa cha kipekee aliishi maisha ya kifahari maisha ya furaha na utajiri wake na Biblia inatuambia kando na mtajiri huyo 
kulikuwa na mtu mmoja maskini alikuwa maskini sana hata alikuwa hawezi kujigaramia chakula chochote alimbodea mtajiri ale alafu yale makombo yatakayoanguka kwenye meza ya mtajiri ndio huyo mtu maskini naye alipata kitu cha kuweka katika tumbo lake biblia inatuambia mtu huyo alikuwa maskini sana lakini kando ya umaskini wake alikuwa na vidonda vingi sana katika mwili na hangeweza kwenda kwa daktari na kitu kilimsaidia ni maumbwa ya mtajiri ambayo yalikuwa yanamlamba lamba na katika kumlamba mtu huyo maskini anga angesikia heri fulani kwa sababu katika umaskini wake hangeweza kujisaidia biblia inatuambia siku ikafika mtajiri akafa So haijalishi mimi ni nani na wewe ni nani Haijalishi jina lako haijalishi cheo chako haijalishi utajiri wako Biblia inasema siku ikafika akafa Alafu Biblia inasema pia naye yule maskini siku yake ikafika akafa The mystery of death is in when we shall die and maybe how we shall die but it should never be a question of any one of us whether you will die because to die you will But Biblia inatuambia Huyu maskini alipokufa Alipokelewa the Bible tells us at the bosom of Father Abraham representing the place of God. Biblia inatuambia mtajiri alipokufa yeye hakupokelewa at the bosom place of Father Abraham the place of God. Alipelekwa mahali pengine ambapo palikuwa tofauti. Palikuwa mahali pa mateso, palikuwa mahali where the Bible tells us he was gnashing his teeth. Kulikuwa mahali ambapo alikuwa na uchungu, kulikuwa mahali ambapo kuna moto ambao unamuunguza lakini hachomeki akaisha. Imagine being in a fire that is tormenting you but you are not being consumed by that fire on a day daily basis you are just suffering in that place biblia ikatuambia siku moja basi huyo mtajiri akaangalia huko juu akamwona yule mjamaa maskini ambaye alikuwa anamlisha kutoka kwa ya, e, e, zime vitu zinyanguka kutoka kwa meza yake akamwona yule mjamaa maskini ambaye alikuwa analamwa na umbwa zake akapaza sauti akamwambia father abraham send that poor man with just a drop, drop of water on the tip of his finger that he may come and cool my tongue for i am tormented in the flame yani mungu tuma huyo mjamaa maskini huyo ambaye alikuwa anakula kutoka kwa makombo yangu akuje tu na tone moja la maji kwenye kidole chake ili aje aguse ulimi wangu angaa na tone moja la maji peke yake ili nipate kusikia heri Mungu akamwambia yule mtajiri pale ulipo na pale huyu maskini alipo kunao ufuo mkubwa sana yeye hawezi kuja pale ulipo na wewe huwezi kuja pale alipo ile mtajiri alipoanza kutambua mambo haya akamwambia Mungu basi mtume huyo mjamaa aende kwa ndugu zangu na watu wangu huko akawaambie mambo haya kwamba kuna mahali ambapo mwanadamu akifa huenda na hapa nilipo si mahali pazuri ili wajipange wasije mahali hapa Mungu akamwambia yule mtajiri huko ndugu zako waliko kunao manabii kunao wahubiri kunao waenjilisti kunao mapasta kama hawatawasikia hao walio huko basi ole wao watu hao in a sense Jesus 
promoted the question of job. That the greatest question in life is not if I will die and when I will die. But the greatest question of life is where I will go when I die. Katika mawazo yetu, huwa tunajipangia maisha hapa duniani. Hata tunaandika will na hakuna ubaya kuandika will. And we leave inheritance for our children. There is nothing wrong with leaving inheritance for your children. But Jesus promotes that question of job to the greatest question that every one of us needs to wrestle with. And the question is, when you die, where will you go? Because andiko hilo, la kitabu chaluka linatuambia, there are places where people go. Either you will go to be with the Father of Heaven, or you will go to be separated from the Father of Heaven. And the Bible is very clear. The place where God is, is a place of fears, is a place of hope, is a place of comfort, is a place of plenty. But a place separated from God is a place of fire. Ni pale mahali tunasema ni jehanamu, eternally separated from God. The big question of life is not when I die, but the question is, where will I go when I die? Now, kiangalia ilo andiko. It seems to me, and I believe it, the decision of where I will go when I die cannot be made after I have died. Because if you look at the rich man, ukimangana yule mtajiri, ni kama mbaya alikuwa anataka kujibembeleza njia yake ya kuingia mbinguni. Akaanza kujibembeleza kwa kumtazama yule maskini. Akasema mungu na mtambua huyo maskini. Akaanza kujibembeleza kwa kuafikiria watu wake, kwa kuafikiria na mama wazuri. Na mungu wakasema vile umeshavu kampaka, umeingia mahali pale umeingia. There is no turn around. If you go to hell, you will be in hell for eternity. That scripture reveals that to us. Kwama, the decision where you will spend your eternity is made now while you're still living. Once you die and you are in a place like this, it is over. But you don't need to finish Ya kwamba uamuzi wa utaenda wapi ukifa is a personal decision. No one can make that decision for you. Ndiyo uyu mtajiri alipomwambia mungu, tuma, tuma, tuma hao marevren wakonge na watu wangu wakonbia, haa, wewe sasa tetea maisa yako, how now watatetea maisa yao. No one can make that decision for you except you yourself. Jesus promotes this question that looked to be a great question. And he invites us to consider the greatest question. When you die, where will you spend your eternity? Now when you talk to people today, when you talk Ah, kuna nchi nyingi za kwenda huko. Fine. But the Bible that I'm holding, which is God's word, has said this. Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. And then he said, no one. And he meant no one comes to the Father but by me. Either he's the greatest liar that ever lived or he's everything that he told us he is. His life has proven to us he is everything he told us because he's the only man who lived without sin. His death and his resurrection proves to us that he's everything he told us that he is. 
because hata leo ukienda huko Holy Land utaonyeshwa mahali ambapo alizikwa na utaona mahali hapo hayupo kwa sababu alifufuka akapaa kwenda mbinguni all other religions pale mahali mkubwa wao alizikwa wanaenda wakizunguka manake mjamaa mifupo yake bado iko hapo ndani lakini sisi ambao tunamwamini Yesu Kristo hakuna mifupa pale in fact you walk in in his grave site and you come out realizing he is not here when you go to the holy land you are to the place where he ascended to heaven and you can see the spot to prove to us he's everything that he said to me mara ngine nikiongea na watu wanaambia pastor mimi naenda kanisa there's nothing wrong with going to church but let me tell you hakuna jina ya kanisa hata moja iliangikwa msalabani kwa ajili ya dhambi zetu no church was hung on the cross for our sins tukina naambia mimi ni mtu mzuri there are no good works that were hung on the cross for our salvation there is only one person who was hung there and his name is Jesus Christ and he said whosoever believeth in me shall not perish but have everlasting life Amen. today we are here because one of us has died yeah me maliza safari yake those of us that are still living are the ones god wants to speak to us because some of us have a decision to make Some of us needs to answer this question. When you die, where will you spend your eternity? The choice is yours. A wise man stood surrounded by university students. Na hao wanafunzi wakasema huyu mjamaa mwerevu sana leo tutamweza tutampatia swali ambalo hata jibu sawa will make sure he answers wrongly so wanafunzi wakashika butterfly wakiweka kwa mkono wakajiambia tutamuuliza hii butterfly iko hai ama imekufa na wakajipanga wakasema akisema imekufa we shall release it it is alive na wakisema iko hai tutaifinyilia hapo hapo ikufe then we tell him you are not that wise and so akamwendea the wise man akamuliza wise man we have a butterfly in our hands is it alive or dead the wise man pondered and the young people thought to memoeza And so they asked him once again, wise man, the butterfly in our hands is it alive or dead? And finally the wise man opened his mouth and said, alive or dead? The choice is yours. And I want to say to you, going to heaven or going to hell? the choice is yours but jesus already paid up the price for your sin his blood was shed on the cross for your sin if he were to ask you for money you would say i, I don't have money but all he's asking you is your faith in him and the surrendering of your life to him so that he can become your savior he can forgive you of your sins write your name in the book of life and give you the gift of eternal life that one day when you lie in a casket like this we stand jumping and dancing because we know you have gone to be with the father in heaven where the scripture tells us 
that place there are no more tears, no more brokenness, no more hunger, no more pain, no sickness. Nifuraha, nafuraha, nafuraha, milele, na milele. Ayubu wakauliza. Jemu anadamu wakifa, ataishi tena. And Jesus says, yes, ataishi tena. But then the greatest question is ataishi wapi. The butterfly is in your hand. Dead or alive, it is your choice. But Jesus Christ is here to save you. If you will call upon him, shall we pray? Mungu, umetuandalia ibada hii kupitia kwa kumchukua kwako ndugu huyu ambaye tunamsindikiza leo. As we say that the motor, wewe ndiye ulimpeana na wewe ndiwe umemtoa. It is God who said your days are done. Come home. And so Mungu tunakushukuru kwa sababu kupitia maisha yake leo tumekusanyika hapa. Na tunakushukuru because your focus now is in the rest of us that are still living. Kwa sababu Kelvin amemaliza safari yake. So Mungu ninaomba katika jina la Yesu Kristo. Kwa kila mmoja ambaye ameisikia sauti hii na kulisikia neno lake lako. Umsaidie to make the right decision. There is life after we die. And the greatest question is, where will I live when I die? So Mungu, even in the quietness of such a moment, convict someone that is here. Call someone that is here. Call someone to cry out to you and say, Jesus, save me. And Lord, draw someone here to your salvation. But do you know today could be the last day that you live? It would not be fair if I don't give you that opportunity to give your life to Jesus. I'm not going to embarrass anyone. But if you want to believe in Jesus Christ, I want to lead you in a prayer right where you are. You can receive the gift of eternal life today. Leave this place today knowing if anything happens to you, you will be received at the bosom of Father Abraham. So, pale olipo. Katika moyo wako omba ombi hii. Sema baba mungu. Naja kwako siku ya leo. Na kushukuru kwa sababu umenena nami. Natambua sasa. Swali kubwa zaidi. Nitaishi wapi. Nitakapokufa. Baba natamani niishi nawe. Na nimesikia leo Yesu peke ndiye njia na kweli na uzima. Naamua sasa kukiri dhambi zangu mbele yako. Na kufungua moyo wangu Yesu ili uingie moyoni. Uwe mwokozi wa maisha yangu. Uandike jina langu kwenye kitabu cha uzima. Na kuanzia leo Niitwe mwana wa Mungu. Unipe uzima wa milele. Baba nimeomba ombi hili kwa imani. Na nakiri sasa 
umeniokoa jina langu umeliandika kwenye kitabu cha uzima So baba ninaomba kama kuna mmoja ambaye ameomba ombi hilo utamuongoza kwa mchungaji wake wachungaji walio hapa ama kwa mwenzake ambaye anajua ameokoka namwambie katika mazishi ya kijana Kelvin mimi nilikutana na Yesu and so God bless us in Jesus name we pray amen, amen.